This is my 351 Windsor that's been lifted out of my truck on a recent trip to the dyno. I recently completed this motor and took it to Mark Small Machine in Westminster, Maryland to make some dyno runs. And so this video is going to show you the results of those runs. Uh, while I was at the dyno, I tried two different intake manifolds. I tried two different carburetors. Um, and so I'll, in a few minutes, I'll get into the, show you each one of those runs. Uh, I'll give you the specs on the motor. It's a 30 over 351, so that's 357 cubic inches. The camshaft is a solid roller cam with a 242, 254 degrees duration split at 50 thousandths. Uh, the valve lift, gross valve lift is 609, 622 intake and exhaust. And the cam is ground on a 111 LSA. It's got about 10 and a half to one compression ratio. And if you want to see any of the other specs or parts list for the motor, uh, you can check out my last video. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, go watch it. And I'll show you a couple more pics of beforehand and then we'll roll right into the dyno runs. This is the first manifold that I tested at the dyno. This is a TrickFlow R-Series single plane intake. And it showed up a couple weeks ago when I was almost ready to take the engine to the dyno. I had ordered this manifold about a year ago and it's been on back order ever since and just happened to show up uh, when I was almost ready to go to the dyno. So I decided I wanted to test it. So I've removed the Edelbrock RPM air gap and test fit this manifold, which it had some fitment issues initially. I couldn't even drop it down between the cylinder heads. It wouldn't fit past the uh, rail for the valve covers. And so I had to knock about a 16th off the top of the flange. The flanges from top to bottom are a little bit taller by about an eighth inch compared to the Edelbrock RPM air gap, which effectively makes it wider and, and wouldn't sit down between the cylinder heads. So after I knocked a little bit off the top, I still couldn't drop it down. I had to slide it in from the end. And then I was able to take a measurement to see how far it had to be uh, dropped in order to get a good port alignment. So I had the ends milled about uh, 100 thousandths. I took it to the machine shop to have them milled. And as you can see here, uh, it ended up with pretty good port alignment. But other than having the ends milled, this manifold was box stock um, as tested. And also initially I ran this manifold with the Barry Grant uh, Demon Carburetor 750 CFM Race Demon. So those are the first set of runs you'll see at the dyno with this manifold and that carburetor. This is the other intake manifold that I tested. It's an Edelbrock Performer RPM air gap and it has been ported by Big Dogs Porting. And so the cross-sectional area on the runners of the Edelbrock are larger than the non-ported TrickFlow R-Series. Although it will still be interesting to see, I would expect the TrickFlow R to give it more top end power, uh, just based on the nature of the tuning of the dual plane with the combination of short and long runners being tuned to a lower RPM and the straight, shorter, straighter runners on the TrickFlow R being tuned to a higher RPM. So it will be interesting to see uh, how that works out on the dyno.
After the sixth run, I switched to the Edelbrock manifold and I had to scrape away the old intake gaskets and I'm using AFR gaskets for an AFR 220 or a 225 cylinder head. Uh, the openings on these are a little bit larger and so I don't have to trim the openings like I did on the Felpro 1262s and they've also got the Printo seal. And on the back side, on the cylinder head side, I use Permatex Right Stuff, a thin smear around the water jackets and on the port openings and on the manifold side I used Edelbrock Gasca Cinch it seems to seal up pretty well and also it doesn't stick to the intake manifold so you can remove the manifold from the gasket without having to scrape the intake manifold So that's it for the dyno runs. Here is a printout of the data for the two best runs. Uh, run number five being the best run for the TrickFlow R manifold and run number nine being the best run for the Edelbrock manifold. You can see the peak horsepower on the TrickFlow R was 503 and the Edelbrock peak power was 484. Uh, Edelbrock had a little more torque, closer to 440. And the uh, TrickFlow R was down around 430 peak. I should also point out that we ran 33 degrees total timing for most of the runs, uh, for all of the runs, I think, except for the first one. My machinist thought that was a pretty safe number, so we kept it at 33 and could have probably eked out a few more torque and horsepower numbers by running another degree or two of timing. Also would have liked to have tried a few more things, like maybe dialing in the air fuel ratio a little bit better on both carbs, but I only paid for four hours of dyno time, so I did the best with what I had. Uh, I will say I was expecting a little bit more in the way of 
power numbers, uh, power and torque. I was expecting maybe 460 or so uh, peak torque numbers. And I'm not sure why it was less than expected other than maybe the correction factor. You can see on the screen and on the dyno runs, correction factor was running at about eight or 9%. And I'm not sure if my machinist um, included a correction factor for inertia and in those correction factors. And if not, that would explain it. Um, also, I was running a water pump, so most professional engine builders that you see dyno their engines on YouTube uh, run electric pumps, so an electric pump would have been good for another 5 horsepower or so. And anyway, here's a plot of the data, um, plot run number 5. Um, and these numbers might differ slightly than the printout because I just picked these numbers from the screen for each run, um, whereas the printout, they were at set... 100 RPM increments, so I didn't pick the exact same data points when I was picking numbers off the screen. Uh, but anyway, this is run number five, and here's run number nine. And here's run number run numbers five and nine on the same plot. And I will say, I was pretty impressed with the performance of the uh, manifold that was Edelbrock manifold ported by Tony at Big Dog's performance. Um, you can see it was up about 20 or so horsepower and torque below 5,000 and above 5,000 it didn't, uh, wasn't down by much. So I would choose to run this manifold on the street definitely and at the track probably choose to run the Trick Flow R. And here's a plot of the best run for my Race Demon carburetor, the Race Demon 750. We ran this out to 6,200 RPM or so, and it looked like it was flattening out around 480 horsepower. So at that point, I was wondering if we were going to make 500 horsepower or not. So when we pulled the Edelbrock carb out of the box and put it on, pretty much jumped up 20 horsepower instantly, which I was pretty surprised at um, before we made any jet changes. And so I was also wondering if we were running out of air, maybe at the top six, between 6,500 and 7,000 RPM um, if we would have run a bigger carburetor, say an 850 CFM, if we would have made more power. Uh, let me know what you think. And that's all that I have for the video. I'll leave you with a shot of my motor in the bed of my truck headed home. And if you made it this far, thanks for watching and look forward to the next video, which should be a video with this engine in the car. All right, thanks.